All right, so this is the second module for lecture 24 on supervised clustering. Uh, inside, uh, we focus on hierarchical clustering uh, in lecture 24. And this is the last section, section 5, in the machine learning class uh, we covered in this fall. All right, so in the module 1, we talked about the definition of uh, group needs and the um, definition of similarity and uh, distance measure. And they'll also uh, briefly talk about how do you represent about objects. So we will uh, cover how many clusters in the next lecture, lecture 25. Uh, so now in this module 2, we uh, focus on to explain uh, what is the hierarchical uh, algorithm to do uh, the clustering. All right, so let's get started. All right, so clustering method can be uh, just roughly categorized into two groups. The first group called partitional method. So usually you start with a random partitioning and then you refine that partition iteratively. The most classic approach called k-means. And then more advanced uh, on uh, extending the k-means is the uh, Gaussian mixture model. And then people further extend it into more generic mixture model-based clustering. So what we're, we're going to cover is only k-means and Gaussian mixture model. And then the other type is called hierarchical uh, clustering method. So it's really just building a binary tree. It, it use a binary, it organize all the samples inside your current data using a binary tree. So normally we call this called a dendrogram uh, structure. You're learning the dendrogram to organize your samples. This dendrogram can be learned from bottom up or from top down. So there are different variations of uh, the algorithms. So uh, let's start to see a hierarchical uh, algorithm. Uh, so in the end, again, so like we said, so it's very hard to see why we're doing this way. So why we are partitioning our samples into groups, why we are partitioning or we are organizing our knowledge into a hierarchical more like tree structure. So, um, so you, in the end, just if you think about data mining or a, a pattern, organizing the data, it does, the goal is what? The goal is to improve how human organize the knowledge. And if you think about your brain, your brain has chunks, right? <coughs> Human brain has different chunks. And your brain naturally organizes the memory, organizes knowledge into chunks. And there's also a hierarchical structure uh, inside how brain organizes the signals coming into our brain. And everything of all those algorithms you can think about where imitating how human organize the knowledge. And the hierarchical structure is a very strong, it's, it provides a very strong structure onto the knowledge. And this knowledge matches how human organize their knowledge in mind. So um, yeah, so this is why hierarchical structure is so dominantly used in almost every scientific discipline, right? People organize, think about species, Think about web pages. Think about uh, um, um, everything: astronomy, <coughs> physics, and all this has this hierarchical view to organize knowledge, organize the discipline. So, uh, but that, how do you create a hierarchy if you do not know the hierarchy beforehand? So, the the normally in the science, different science, you have experts, you have professional researchers build the hierarchy of the knowledge of the discipline, right? But um, when you have a unknown data, you actually do not, you don't know anything. How do you get a hierarchical structure to organize the samples? So this is about hierarchical clustering. Uh, so the question is in the end, so you want to uh, find the uh, tree structure to all organize your data points, right? And if you think about it, this is a search task. I'm searching a tree to organize my data points. And then 
uh, the mo most brutal force method is okay. So uh, if my goal, as as the general classroom goal, is maximize intercluster similarity and minimize the intracluster similarity, then I'm using this as my loss function, right? So everything we did before in the predictive model setting is there's a loss function. And you can use it as a loss function. And then my goal is to look for a model. What is my model? My model is the tree that the tree represents my data. So then the whole task is for whatever given data, I want to look for a best tree, maximize the intercluster similarity, minimize the in, uh, intercluster similarity. Uh, but however, this is extremely difficult task. Let's just see the numbers. So if you have number of leaves, like two leaves, the number of possible tree, the dendrogram is a binary tree. Uh, it's one. If you have three data points, the number of binary trees to organize three points is three. If you have four, that's 15. If you have five, that's 105. And then if you have 10, there are 34 million possible binary trees actually to organize the data points. So there's no way to do brutal force type of uh, scoring just do global search the optimal model that to fit my data according to the loss function. So because of this is no non, it's not polynomial. There's no there's no way using polynomial methods because the search space is certainly not polynomial, right? It's a very very uh, it's actually extremely non polynomial uh, search space. So again, so that's why people use this very, very greedy local method to build a tree. Question about this. Yeah, so it's extremely difficult target space because my target is a tree, right? I'm trying to identify a tree to fit my data then according to a scoring function. All right. So, uh, yeah, it's actually, again, using a funny uh, cartoon example is, so we begin, so normally hierarchical clustering, it starts from uh, either a similarity matrix or you, a flip side is distance matrix. So you can think about this case is, uh, you can just get a distance matrix to capture. So this small cartoon uh, versus the, this is the blue hair, uh, the distance is two and the smaller, a uh, cartoon figure versus this purple hair, the distance is four. And then uh, you start, you just start from this matrix, distance matrix. You try to find the best pair. You try to find the best pair that is capture the smallest distance ever. If you build a cluster, maximize or minimize the in the within cluster distance. Again, I'm building a small cluster, minimize the possible distance within the cluster, which is, if you think about in the first step, it just, I'm trying to find a two person cluster, which has the smallest number, small uh, less the value of distance measure, which give me the best cluster ever for my current state. And then you compare all the numbers here, and because this is one, and that's why you cluster this two to build up the first cluster. So again, my goal is minimize the within cluster distance, maximize the between cluster distance. In this case, because it's a hierarchical structure, we let's just focus on minimize the within cluster distance. So this is my goal, my loss function. Uh, yeah, so then you just, because there, there are totally one, two, three, four, five. There are five figures building a two cluster. How many choices? 
Five figures, pairwise clusters. This is the simplest combinatorial ever. And also be careful about the zero here. Remember the distance measure we said, a good distance metric would, should have cell similarity property. So who A is always the most similar to A. B is always the most similar to B. All right, so uh, you just compare all the possible pairwise combinations, and then you pick the one give you the smallest, which is one, which is uh, also both purple pair, and then red dress versus the blue dress, and they are the first cluster. Okay, so you've got the best, and then this is your current cluster, and then you're trying to figure out the next best cluster, because you that's all you can do uh, to make it feasible um, to look for the binary tree, right? The next best cluster from this figure is from this matrix is two, and this is the smallest number, two. And then this is how you get, you group this two together, you group the other two together. And then what do you do? You already have two to cluster, and then you further trying to find for my current situation, the best cluster ever. But then there's a situation, uh, I'm going to talk about how do you group these two together. And so rather than, you know, you have only this uh, teacher left, um, and then wh why don't, why you group, why don't you just group the teacher with one of the cluster instead, instead of group the two clusters together. So what type of metric you use? So that's, it's about how to compute distance between clusters because when you have the middle level clustering results, the distance calculation is not just among samples anymore. It's also among the clusters or a specific sample with a certain cluster. So then this gives the differences of variation of bottom up hier hierarchical clustering. So how do you calculate distance among clusters? There are three different uh, rough kinds. The first kind called a single link hierarchical clustering. So when you have two clusters, you try to calculate the cluster versus cluster distance measure. What you use is the nearest neighbor members inside each cluster. You use the smallest distance that's possible to represent the cluster, uh, this, the two clusters distance. Or uh, there's the, the entirely the opposite called complete link method is you use their furthest members, the distance measure as the cluster uh, distance measure, or you use uh, the average. So let's see concretely. So, uh, if you see this class C1 and class C2, how do you measure, because each one of them have multiple members, right? How do you measure this cluster versus this cluster's distance? And the single link is, I'm using the two uh, members inside each. This specific line represents the closest member distance. I'm using that closest member distance as the distance among the two clusters. And if you're using this uh, single link using the closest member, so clearly C1 and C2 should be grouped together first because this specific length is smaller than C2 or C3. So uh, yeah, this is a single link and then you can actually tell this creates some kind of uh, pretty thin and slim stretch out clusters. And then uh, it may potentially generate long and skinny clusters. And then you can also use the two members that is farthest apart in the two clusters. In this case, is C1 and C2 is this is their current complete link distance, uh, distance, uh, that distance lens uh, align, and then C2 and C3 is in fact actually this, um, that's the furthest line. When you compare, so if you use completely, and then C3 and C2 are more closer to each other, 
versus C1 and C3, and also versus C1, uh, versus C1 and C2, and also versus C1 and C3. So this actually potentially give you a more tighter cluster because you try to, this in fact, trying to push uh, the, it trying to push more closely related uh, clusters uh, uh, more uh, together. And the pre previous one allows, as long as they have some uh, touching, they are close together in some point, not every point, right? So, but this requires, they are close to, to their, uh, the two cluster are together almost among all the points. So that's why this more creates you more tighter, more uh, kind of uh, more tighter, bigger, uh, tighter clusters. And then the third is just you calculate all the possible pairwise and then uh, you use the average. Okay, so I want to do a computational complexity analysis now. Uh, because I think it's the most interesting because all those methods, all those clustering methods are very, very heuristic driven. And uh, they're mostly grady, mostly local. Then what really matters is in the end, it's more um, computational cost, right? Is it fast? How fast? Uh, what's the computational, uh, maybe a memory cost or uh, the time cost? So let's see uh, in this case, so we already said, right, um, to have a, um, okay, let me maybe check you, have you understand the uh, hierarchical clustering, it's such an easy algorithm. So this is a given distance matrix, and this is uh, the points, one, two, three, four, five, the index here matches that matrix index. So who and what is the first cluster? Who and who should be first cluster together? Okay, there's a little bit of, uh, sorry, this is one, this is two, it's, yeah. It's not entirely, yeah, it is, but shift. <laughs> yeah, so look at this, yeah. So, um, again, this is a good distance metric. It satisfies symmetry property, right? Because it satisfies the symmetry property, I only need to just show you the lower triangular because the upper triangular equals to the lower triangular. First is symmetry distance measure. The second uh, property, common sense property is that all these diagonal elements are zero. They are self uh, similar. And then, uh, then I can just um, see the smallest possible uh, numbers in this matrix is two. So, which means I should just cluster one, two together. Okay, so what's next? After I cluster one, two together, what should be the next? Two, three. All right, so uh, if I cluster the one, two together, the first step, what should I do? I just should revise my matrix, right? Because now, what should my mix matrix look like now? One, two, three, four, five, right? One, two, three, four, five. All right, so, uh, the three, four, five, if I'm copying, uh, what should I do next now? I should, because I should actually calculate all the possible pairwise distance to create this distance matrix among all the possible cluster, right? So um, let's see, one, two, first, so first of all, let me put all the zero there. So uh, zero, and uh, it's a bad matrix writing, and zero, okay, so, and uh, because four, so this is like three, four, 
five, and those are not revised at all, right? In the, from the original matrix, I can just copy. So I can copy, what should I copy here? Three, four, five, uh, seven, five, oh no, that's not right. It says four and three, right? Who is four and three? Four and the three, that's seven. Did I write something wrong here? One, two, seven. This is four, right? Four and five. Yes, that's correct. And then three and five. Three and five is, so this is seven and five. And then uh, what is one, two versus three, four, five? One, two versus three, four, five. One, two versus three, what is it? So we're using a single link. One, two versus three. One, two versus three is supposed to be uh, one, two. So oh, the one and two versus three, six and three, right? Single link means what? The smaller number. So that's why I should put three there, right? Should I put three there? Now one, two versus four. What is one, two versus four? 10 versus 9, I should put a three number, uh, smaller number there, right? So this is 9. And then uh, 1, 2 versus 5, 9 versus 8, I should put 8 there. Okay, so, and then what's the next cluster? 1, 2 versus 3. Yeah, if I don't generate this matrix, if I directly just see what's the next in the original matrix, and that should give me, uh, yeah, I don't even know how to generate that. Two and three, yeah. Because one and two are already clustered, right? So you can't just use the second minimal points from the original matrix as the next ready choice. You have to regenerate the matrix and to be able to know what is the next. So this is the process of performing hierarchical cluster. Okay, so because I'm doing this process to you, right, and now let's do the calculations. So, you know, you have all the points, each point is belongs to, uh, this is on data points, right? Each data point is a p-dimensional vector. And this means if I'm calculating Euclidean distance or whatever Minkowski distance, what's the cost to calculate maybe a distance among xi and xj? Time cost. Just for one pairwise distance measure. For one pairwise distance calculation, What's the asymptotic number I should put it there? Your, if you remember what I wrote before, Minkowski distance measure adds all the way back. Okay. Yes, Minkowski. So let's just say Euclidean distance. How many operations here if on a p dimensional vector? How many operation here? It's actually OP, right? So there are P element wise subtraction quadratic operation, and then you do a summation because that summation is O1 cost, and then square root is also O1 cost. So that's why I'm writing the time cost of calculating either the Euclidean distance or um, all the other Minkowski distance is similar. They're element-wise operation. They're totally P elements because it's P dimensional, right? So to calculate this needs a cost of time cost in, in terms of flaws or, yeah, that's just same time. It's OP. All right, so then, 
create this matrix, what is the cost? It's all like matrix, uh, all the possible pairwise matrix. What is the cost here? To calculate all the possible pairwise, I mean cost e maybe distance measure. How many elements here? There's let's assume there are a total of n elements, n point, n data point. X1, X2, down to Xn. Total n point. It's same as our matrix, right? N times P. Here, there's a total of n points. And then this means your pairwise distance matrix is uh, n times n matrix. And then that means creating this pairwise matrix needs time cost of n quadratic P. All right, okay, so this is only the first step. Now, I need to get the smallest number to as the current stage clustering. Smallest, this is actually only cost, that's just smallest, actually all in quadratic because it's smallest it's a loop over all the possible n quadratic. It's all n quadratic. Uh, yeah, so you've got the smallest cluster. Then you need to recalculate the matrix. So what is that matrix cost? I already did to you, right? Roughly. So there's a best operation. You've got the best current cluster. This cost about O n quadratic. And now I'm readjusting that distance matrix, right? So what's the readjusting the distance matrix time cost? So in fact, if you think about it, it depends on the size of the current and new cluster from the previous cluster. So the, the current stage versus the previous stage, right? It depends. Um, it depends on is this a sample? Is this a cluster? But let's just assume for, for this specific setting is I need to recalculate the size of the cluster. In that size of cluster, I'm performing the mean operation. Um, so you have to just then recalculate the specific cluster's distance versus all the other clusters. And the number of cluster is upper bounded by n, which means the next recalculation is O n. I think it's O n cost. This is O n, and then depends on the size of the cluster. So okay, and it's a little bit okay. So I'm now you know the first stage is the distance matrix, right? The second stage is to calculate the new cluster versus all the rest. The versus all the rest, the number of the rest is upper bounded by O n. And the size of this is also upper bounded by O n, which makes the recalculation of this new matrix it's upper bounded by O n quadratic. I hope you get it. Yeah, but that's okay if you don't get it. So, and this actually is upper bounded by O n quadratic. Oh, let me normalize. It's all capital N in this type. I write it capital N. So, and then you have to do this iteratively. If you do badly, you need to perform a really... So, how many is this iterative uh, recalculating matrix, then reassigning cluster. How many times you do this? How many times you do this? Actually, it's upper bounded by n2 because this is a hierarchical clustering, right? 
which makes what? So I'm going to, I actually skipped um, all the details and you can do, you can, you have to read matrix again, 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 until every point is part of a cluster. Uh, so I think I'll, I have a computation. Yeah, let me move to that, uh, that page. So if you do naively that best rematrix, uh, figure out the best cluster, if you do naively, this is an NQ time cost algorithm. So this is the reason why I'm doing this, but yeah, try to figure that out. But so in the end, um, but you can do a little bit smarter, which gives you an algorithm is n quadratic log n. You can do a little bit better, but naively it's n cube cost. So, so this gives you an example of a single linkage. It normally gives you very, very thin, very slim cluster. And this gives you a little bit more balanced because it's calculated the average distance among clusters. The height itself represents the distance between the objects and cluster, which is a really good thing. Um, you can actually use the height to represent it. So the cluster itself captures a lot of knowledge. Yeah. So uh, what we just covered is only a bottom-up uh, approach. So you start from each sample, each object in different separate cluster. You repeatedly grow, repeatedly grow the cluster and according to the, the algorithm. And to you join the closest pair of clusters and until there's only one cluster summarize all the data. And the history of merging cell forms a binary tree and we normally call that dendrogram. And the top down, there's another approach is top down, uh, top down divisive, which we are not going to cover. Um, yeah. So uh, the computational cost is in the first iteration, it's going to compute the similarity measures, which I already covered, it's O n quadratic P cost. And then in each of the subsequent, there's actually n minus two merging iterations, it, you can calculate it because the first is two, and then you, if you just, you keep adding a cluster or, uh, so it's, you can actually calculate this. There's a total of n minus two merging operations. So that's the reason why, and in the previous calculation I give to you here, uh, up here, yes. So uh, the so the size of the cluster is upper bounded by O n. So I'm just assuming of the worst possible cases. Yeah. So every time you're adding a node into my current cluster. That's the simplest way to calculate cost, right? Every time I'm adding one here, which means I need to calculate all the rest of the non-cluster points versus my current cluster. And that distance measure calculation, it's upper bound by all quadratic. And uh, the number of the size of the nodes left uh, not in the cluster yet is open. And uh, yeah, so that's the reason why the naive method gave you NQ uh, cost. All right, so uh, yeah, so feel free to do this uh, again, 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 and then you get the final cluster look like this. And you can also change to complete link or uh, average link, and that will give you a different type of clustering. And I think that's everything I want to cover. So. To summarize about hierarchical clustering, uh, a good thing is you don't need to specify how many clusters because it automatically gives you a tree to organize the data. And it might map very nicely to human intuition. This is how human organize their knowledge uh, in their brain. And they don't scale, uh, scale well. There's a, a issue is um, the the time complexity is actually at least O n quadratic. It doesn't work for uh, the when your n is large. And like any other uh, heuristic search, and you are you're doing greedy local at every stage. I mean, is the final binary tree the best tree? 
you actually don't know because you, you just you don't even search that way, right? You only perform grading at every uh, step of classroom. And the interpretation is very nice because the height, the order of how the cluster are uh, grouped together, it's all part of the properties of your data. So this is why actually hierarchical clustering is used very dominantly in many different scientific uh, disciplines, even though this is such a simple method. All right, so to summarize, uh, clustering, and this is about grouping points, and then the choices is, in the end, is a representation is what type of distance measure you pick. And uh, we should have distance, could distance metrics have follows the four properties we have because that's really common sense property. And there's no clear defined loss. In fact, I mean, I the clustering, I just told you a very intuitive, very intuitive uh, loss function, which is to minimize the within cluster distance. But there's no formally this, uh, defined um, the loss formulation. It, it performing the greedy local bottom up or uh, top down. The model itself is a binary tree. Uh, we always, always we normally call that a dendrogram in this setting. So uh, I think that 